Now, as time progressed in the dream, I was given the ability to realize by being in homes that television sets not only broadcast and transmitted programming, but they now had the capacity to actually send signals about you in your living room. Now listen, I was able to see that television sets were actually watching people in their homes, monitoring their movements, monitoring their conversations. More than just bringing you your favorite shows, it may be watching and recording your every move. Nine on your side, Scott Wagoner tells us this smart TV has some people worried. Since the late 1940s, families have gathered around the television set to watch their favorite shows. But now, in 2015, it appears the television is watching back. It's Samsung's smart TV. It collects this information through a camera aimed at the viewer and microphones that pick up your conversation. We should absolutely be concerned about this. You see, journalism professor Jeff Blevins advises you to read the small print. Oftentimes, I think we're not aware of exactly what it is that, you know, that, that we're giving away or what the consequence of that might be. Samsung says the technology is designed to respond to your preferences. It can find your favorite shows, connect you to services it thinks you would like, and allows you to change its function with a wave of your hand. So my freedoms and my patriotism were instantly being eroded from my understanding. Because our rights contained in the Bill of Rights do not come from the Constitution. They come from God. It's clearly stated in the Declaration of Independence. Our laws do not come from God, Your Honor, and you know that. The law of this country calls it the organic law of our country means where our rights come from. And if they come from there, men can't take our them Our rights do not come from God. For journalists in this country, the realization that the government is spying on their communications is becoming more and more common. That's according to a new study from the Pew Research Center. It reports that nearly 7 in 10 journalists believe that the Obama administration has in fact spied on them. But where is the media pushback against all of this? Sobriety checkpoints. Thousands of motorists are stopped in them each year. Good evening, how you doing? Typically, drivers are asked to roll down the window and hand over ID. But more drivers are starting to challenge these DUI checkpoints. A video making its way around the internet is advising motorists that at police DUI checkpoints like this one, motorists can simply communicate in writing. More than two million people have watched the video. It shows somewhat surprised officers in Levy County, Florida, look at a flyer and examine identification with the window up. I have my fair DUI flyer. The flyer says, I remain silent, no searches, I want my lawyer, along with sections of the motor vehicle law. Listen to this one. This is going to have a whole bunch of you rolling your eyes this morning. There was a student at a Florida high school who was in trouble for simply saying, God bless America, during the school's morning announcements. Some very unusual things began to happen almost immediately. Crops began to perish, droughts and famine. These areas were totally destroyed with drought and famine. Places that were once fertile were now arid deserts. Historic drought continues to take a toll on California's farmland, and today millions learned they won't be receiving any water from the state. A healthy and full lake in Northern California. There's only one problem. This picture is three years old. And now I'm walking on top of that very same bridge. Take a look. It is a virtual desert. This is what drought looks like in the state of California. On a farm in Rio de Janeiro State, healthy green corn stalks are disappearing. Brazil's worst drought in 80 years. This is the first time it's been like this. We've had droughts in the region before, but nothing like this. This is the first drought we've had here, which has been really very difficult. At this moment, what began to happen was the normal weather patterns completely changed. The, the, the patterns for winter became summer, summer became winter, and you might have a day of snow and a day of heat. State water officials are painting a bleak outlook after the measuring the snowpack in the Sierra Mountains. The worst part is one of San Diego's main water sources. You may have noticed I'm wearing short sleeves in the dead of winter. That's because it is hotter and drier than ever before. January should have been the wettest month, but the supply fell back to one-fourth. Very unusual things began to happen with law. I began to see local municipalities and no longer were police departments the enforcers of the law of municipalities, but military police driving very unusual looking vehicles 
that I now know to be called Humvees. Covering St. Lucie County, police in Fort Pierce now have a new tool to fight criminals. They unveiled a U.S. surplus battle wagon. It's a six-wheel, 30-ton armored vehicle worth $700,000. But get this, the agency only paid $2,000 for it. Officer Keith Holmes says it's a great addition. It was canvas here, and there was a man standing in the back. They were wearing very unusual outfits, by the way. On the top of them, I began to see cameras, little white uh, oval-looking, hot dog kind of looking cameras. And in the dream, I, it was revealed to me that these cameras knew the whereabouts of everybody's vehicles. More high-tech crime-fighting tools for our police is the latest election promise from Labor. The move will make catching crooks through CCTV even easier. But could it also impact on our privacy? Tech companies are among the groups coming to Washington to help create the first voluntary guidelines. Facial recognition is already in some of our home appliances, like TVs. Hi, TV! In our mobile devices, pins and passwords are giving way to face prints. And the technology can single us out in real time as we go about our daily business, often without us ever knowing. I was on my way to conduct another business transaction and I ran into an individual. He was very, very excited and began to talk to me about something he had just experienced. This man has said to me, Ken, uh, I introduced myself to him. He was very excited. He said, have you got your identification mark? And I said, I don't know what you mean. What's an identification mark? He says, uh, they've just enacted a new identification mark. And by the way, this started with a voluntary implementation first. You, you, you did it voluntarily first. This man told me, you ought to get yours done real soon to avoid the hassle because soon everyone, they say, will have to have this to conduct business. And finally this morning, no need to worry about forgetting your work ID with this development. A new office facility in Sweden is offering workers the option to have a microchip implanted to give them access to the building. Now the chip is about the size of a grain of rice and would be implanted in the hand. Cecilia Osterholm starts her day with this new technology. She swapped her keys for a chip in her hand that uses a radio signal to open doors. You have a chip in your hand there? That's right. It's been inserted there. Right. So that's how do you open it? Forget wearable technology. Swedish office worker Lynn Kowalaska is having it implanted under her skin. A microchip about the size of a grain of rice is injected into her hand. Uh, it felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. I saw this man that was a very, very big man. I, I, was, I was sharing uh, earlier in the tour that he was tall like a, a professional basketball player, but he was very uh, big like a professional football player. He was an extremely large uh, man, and he had a big uh, hood, like a satin hood, over his head. My wife was in front of me, and they began to tell her she could renounce her faith and, and live. And now I realize what was happening, because this man was standing there with a huge sword. ISIS released a new video today showing the execution of 21 Coptic Christians kidnapped in Libya. The video shows the Egyptian prisoners being marched onto a beach by militants dressed in black. Then the prisoners are beheaded brutally. He was tall like a, a professional basketball player. This video really marks ISIS on the world stage, well beyond the videos that we've seen in the past out of Syria and Iraq. Stranded on a notorious stretch of coast in New Zealand. Almost 200 pilot whales have beached themselves. Around 25 of the animals have already died and more are expected.
After a few moments, I turned back, and there was the Lord Jesus Christ standing behind me. And I can tell you, folks, I know for a certainty, He is the Lord of Lords and the King of every King. When I saw Him, there is not one knee, there is not one tongue that will not confess His Lordship, regardless of what side of the coin they are, when He reveals Himself to them. Every knee will bow, trust me. Because this presence that He stood in was so powerful, so awesome, so anointing.